So we've seen that we get these um, clusters of stars in the black hole, but we don't see the black hole. It's just surrounded by light. We only infer its presence. But if you remember back to the first course in the series, there are some galaxies which have massive black holes which are radiating like crazy. These are called the quasars, and it's thought to be a disk of gas swirling down the throat of one of these massive black holes. Here's a zoom in of one of these things left over from that course. So here's a, a galaxy, and we're going to zoom in on it. And right in the center, you can see the dot of light. That's where we expect the black hole to be. And we'll morph into another image in a second. And that we'll dot of light is outshining all of the billions of stars, right? So very powerful. And now if we zoom in, we can see the dot in the middle and actually blasting out light in both directions. Oh. So, Paul, you know, what fraction of galaxies look like this? Only very few. Most galaxies, they all, as far as we can tell, have this massive black hole in the middle. Most of them are not shining like this. Hmm. Then we zoom right in the middle and we get this disk around the black hole. So what's, what's going on here? We, we, we get these incredibly luminous things in some fraction of galaxies, but most we don't. So, okay, so I guess we have to ask ourselves the question, what makes something like this bright? Why would it be bright? And presumably it's bright because it's got an energy source. Yeah, so there are kind of two possibilities for why if every galaxy has a black hole, why doesn't uh, every galaxy have a quasar? And one possibility is maybe they do have something, but it's hidden from us. We know that the middles of galaxies are very dusty places, so it could be that actually far more galaxies have quasars than we think, but they're hidden by dust clouds. And so, yeah, so Paul, you've gone out and you've looked in red light, so you can look better through the dust. What do you find? Well, it seems that for every quasar we see, there are probably two or three more that are hidden. Okay, so... But that's still a very small fraction of galaxies. So in most cases, we are seeing uh, that there is a black hole, but it's, there's no quasar there. So maybe they're more like a strobe light that's only on occasionally and then switches on, off, on, off, so that they have that energy source, but not all the time. Yes, yeah, so it could be something to do with feeding. I mean, presumably, you've got a black hole and it's going to eat everything that's got low enough angular momentum to fall in. And maybe that's why you get the quasar phase, what gobbles on everything around it. And yeah. then after a while, anything that's going to fall in has fallen in. And so the only thing that's going to be left to those in orbits that never come that close at that point, it might go quiet. So the, I guess the question is why you would have much stuff. I mean, l you say low angular momentum, but when the galaxy forms, well, that stuff gets beaten up into submission with or without a black hole there. So what would cause there to be a bunch of stuff that is able to go into the black hole? Strikes me that most of the time, there wouldn't be much stuff at all. It just yeah. would keep orbiting. We know that the quasars were very common in the early universe. So presumably that's when you first form the galaxy and things are all mucked up and confused. But we still have some quasars today. And so something must have stirred these things up. So, so if, you know, at some point in the future, in about three billion years, the Andromeda galaxy, which has a big black hole, and our Milky Way, which seems to have a black hole, are going to merge. Now that strikes me as a good way to stir stuff up. So maybe it's galaxy mergers that give us this supply uh, Indeed, gas. people have thought this idea for decades now that maybe what's happening is you get a massive black hole in the middle of a galaxy. Early on, it's very bright because there's forming the galaxy. Once the galaxy settles down to sedate middle age, um, everything that could have been eaten has been eaten. It's not shining. But then every now and then you get a galaxy collision, and that will drive stuff in. There's only one problem. If you look at colliding galaxies and non-colliding galaxies, the rate at which you see quasars seems to be about the same in both of them. Hmm. Uh, what is, how long does it take for a quasar to light up once uh, galaxies collide? Well, that could be a way out of this. It could be that the galaxies collide and drive the gas in, and then the collision settles down, but the gas is still working its way down in the center where we can't really see it. And so it could be that the quasar phase happens well after the collision. Or it could be these are minor collisions where a very small galaxy forms into a bigger one, like the Magellanic Clouds will eventually um, the, pass through the disk of our own galaxy and fall in. There's another uh, galaxy, or dwarf galaxy currently falling into our own Milky Way. And maybe it's these really small things that are much harder to see that come in and funnel the gas into the center. Yeah, I suppose we don't actually need that much mass, even to shine as bright as a quasar, if you're falling into a giant black hole. Yep. So there do seem to be massive black holes in the middle of pretty much every galaxy, um, but only a very small fraction of them are shining, and we're not quite sure why.